in this episode. Join Brad from Team Traction as we go to the Bressingham Steam Museum and Gardens in Norfolk. Explore over 50 years of heritage at this museum with scenes such as... Bressingham Steam Museum and Gardens was started from scratch by the late Alan Bloom and has amassed an amazing amount of unique items of locomotives and rolling stock over the last 50 years. Passing by the cameras now is the Bressingham owned and recently overhauled LBSCR A1 class numbers B662 Martello, resplendent in the Southern Railway green livery. Bressingham has a total of seven gauges on site. From 5 inch, 7 inch, 10 and a quarter inch, 15 inch, 2 foot, and standard gauge. The main attraction obviously being standard gauge with Martello. Here she is making a spirited departure on the demonstration line, short quarter of a mile single track, which goes out and back of the museum site, running parallel to the 15 inch minimum gauge railway for a short while. Now it's about time we board some trains ourselves. The first one we ride is the 2 foot or 610mm Fen Railway. The Fen Railway was formerly called the Nursery Railway before the nurseries were sadly redeveloped. It was the first railway to be completed at Bressingham opening in 1968. The railway is 2.5 miles in length and crosses the 15 inch Waveney Valley Railway and runs parallel to it for a short distance. It goes through meadows and through various livestock fields. And here we pass the site of the old nurseries. Since Alan Bloom died, the nurseries were sold off and redeveloped, but for a while there were ghostly rotting polytunnels all across this landscape, making the scenery look quite unattractive unfortunately. However, they are slowly returning the land to its former glory, which can only be a good thing. One of the main attractions at the Bressingham site is the steam powered gallopers. These have been a part of the site from the very beginning and always draw the crowds, especially young children. This takes centre stage in the middle of the Bressingham area 
and is a very nice sight to behold. Now approaching us is one of the two foot quarry Hunslet, number 994 George Sholto and she is an 040 saddle tank and painted in lime green livery. She was built in 1909 and she operated at the Penrith and Quarry. Uh, she was restored at Bressingham and spent a period of time operating under its other guys of Bill Harvey and without a cab. However, her cab has now been restored uh, in the mid 2000s and she's also received a new boiler and work on the chassis. This was completed in 2011 and George Sholto is once again a regular performer on the Nursery Railway. Now approaching us is the 20 tonne brake van which Martello is giving brake van rides in. Martello giving the signal to the crossing keeper. She's now on her way back towards the main dressing room site. to the Waveney Valley Railway. This is a 15 inch gauge minimum railway. The line was first opened in 1973 and is one and a half miles in length. As we're waiting for the road we see one of the other quarry hunslets and that is number 316 Gwynard which is an 04 OST. So the Waveney Valley Railway crosses the nursery railway as we see twice in fact once at the start just before we depart and then once again about half a mile down the line the Waveney Valley Railway also runs parallel to the standard gauge railway for about a quarter of a mile at the end of the route Parallel to the two foot railway with Gwynard passing us. Now, the 15 inch gauge railway has to stop to let the two foot railway pass. There's a flat crossover, diamond crossover, just in front of us. So, once they are clear, we get the road to depart. from the Fen Railway we can really open up. Our motive power is St Christopher which is a 262 tank engine 
with a spare tender or wagon tender on the back. This was constructed by the Exmoor Steam Railway in 2001, so it's quite a modern engine. Um, it's moved to Bressingham in 2011 and is now the only engine operational on the Waverley Valley. Because the other two, the classic Rosencliver and Manotu, both German crop Pacifics, are both unfortunately under overhaul at the moment or on static display. As we exit the forest we now come alongside the Sentinel steam crane and a Great Eastern Railway six wheel carriage both in really bad disrepair. And we are now alongside the Standard Gauge Railway. Fortunately this doesn't line up. They do try and make it line up so Martello is waiting for us as we come through with the Waveney Valley service but it doesn't always line up. If it does we get some really nice parallel running which we will see later. And here's a quick look at St Christopher. Standing on the signal box now, we get a good vantage point to see number 662 in full steam coming up from the forest into the main platform. I think it's about time we do a little time lapse of the entire standard gauge run. And this is a time lapse on the way back. In the museum now, and we get a glimpse of my two favourite engines at Brestingham. This is a LNER E4 or Great Eastern T26 number 490 in the Great Eastern Railway Lime Blue. Absolutely stunning tender engine. And a little buck jumper next to it, a J69 or a Great Eastern R24. They're both in royal blue, but unfortunately both have been in museum condition since the 1960s. I would pay anything to see them run again. Next to it is the London Tilbury and South End Railway, number 79 Thundersley, and one of the Mark III Royal Saloons behind the Buck Jumper.
Next, we see a surviving B4, a London and South Western Railway, called Granville. Not many people know she exists, which is a shame. Same with the T26 and R24, actually. And we can have a quick glimpse into the R24 number 87's cab. Some more Royal Saloons. And we can have a nice look into Granville's cab. Strange engine is a Beckton saddle tank for the Beckton Gas Works number 25. It's got no cab and it's a very, very low saddle tank. And next to it is an even rarer engine. This is the only surviving Bayer Garrett in the UK. Uh, it's from the Bazersley Colliery, as you can see here. And yes, as it says on there, it is the only. Standard Gauge Bay Garrett uh, called William Francis. Very lovely engine, but it is in disrepair. However, there are talks of it being restored. And here we see Martello back outside running again on the demonstration trains. <laughs> I was very lucky as well to get a cab ride on Martello. So this is the official second time I've got a cab ride on an engine. Yes, they've both been small tank engines. The other one being the LNER Y7 at the Mid Suffolk, but it's still nice to have a cab ride on an engine nonetheless. With the beautiful exhaust, this engine sounds very unique and it was a pleasure to ride on. Are we going to try and wait for uh, this one or do the double? Here is the long promised race where the 15 inch gauge railway comes alongside us and we give it a run for its money. Enjoy. Final shot of today's episode is of Gwyneth passing with a demonstration slate train. Sorry for the hiatus on YouTube, it's been a hectic few months, but I promise to get back into the swing of things now. So, I hope you enjoyed today's episode, and I'll see you again very shortly. Bye for now. You've just been watching Team Traction. Here we are.
like the video be sure to subscribe. Also check out our other videos. Thanks for watching. Bye, Bye for now. now.